Hello, and welcome to Seeking Heaven, the Near-Death Experience and Other Phenomena. I'm your host, Tamara Calder Richardson, a six-time near-death experiencer, evidential medium, and Christ channeler. And welcome to my channel. And make sure you please subscribe, like, and make comments. And make sure that you join and subscribe to my newsletter at my Ascension School, AcademyOfDivineWisdom.com, where you get a free 30-minute Christ-like meditation. And check out the events that are coming up, too. And if you're interested in a spiritual session, go to southernbellmedium.com and always check out my store where I have five custom merchandise designs and that's at seekingheavenstore.com. Well, let's get started at our guest today because I know you're as excited as I am to hear from them. And that would be James or Jim Bubba Bay. Now he's a near-death experiencer. He's also part of a, several family businesses, and he's from uh, Upper New York. He's a former high school coach, as well as the author of Miracle of Hammertown Road. And he is here today to tell us about his amazing near-death experience, how it has changed him. We have had so much fun talking on the pre-show that we could barely get started in this interview. That's how delightful he is. So, <laughs> so welcome, Jim. We're finally doing this. <laughs> Good to have you. Let's I'm try there to now. Get... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I tell you, we had so much fun, and you're so down to earth, and I can totally see why you are a um, uh, an ambassador from the divine to be able to hear and just talk to people like a regular person and. I love how you don't put on any pretenses and you just, you know, speak from your heart. So I know that people are excited to hear about your near-death experience, but you were telling me that actually before any of this happened, I mean, it wasn't like you expected any of this, but you said that you had some, some kind of spiritual um, signs beforehand. That's a, 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 you were talking about a book. Did you want to mention that first? Sure, sure. I'm, I'm going to go back uh, way before my uh, near death because it, little did I know things were leading up to, you know, that night. And I didn't know what, you know, we never know what's going to happen to us. Anyway, to, a little backstory is uh, I grew up uh, a Christian and my family, we, 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 we went to church when we, when I was younger, younger. And then we moved to a town, Pine Plains, New York. That's where I live still. And uh, my parents brought a house. And my dad, our family gas station worked up six days a week. And the seventh day was Sunday. And we had to, to remodel the inside of the house. We had, used to have the lath and uh, board. And we, he wanted to put insulation in all the walls. So anyway, so church went by the wayside because Sundays were work on the house days. It was uh -huh. his only day home. And my brother and me and my sister and my mom and my father, that's what we did. We worked on the house. We knocked down walls and cleaned it up and it was, so we stopped going to church but we did belong to a methodist church in pine plains and we and and i became a christian christian which is somebody that goes christmas and easter that's basically <laughs> what i what i ended up being a christian christian so i grew up not knowing the bible uh, i'd never read it i did have a problem with the bible myself only because and i question it because if, if all that, you know, death and everything that happens in the Bible is from God, then it can't be from God because of all that violence and everything in the Bible. So mm -hmm. that kept me partly from not reading it. And that was mm -hmm. my thoughts. And that's so I was growing up like that. Well, the fast forward, I, I got married to my, you know, now we're ex-wife, Yanina and I. And uh, she, she had two uh, boys, my stepsons, John and Robert. They were twins. And then we had a. Uh, my my son Logan and my daughter Lauren, but we also had our son James. And we uh before my daughter was born, it was Logan was born and then we won another one. Well James ended up being premature and died 10 days later. Oh dear so, God. Uh, yeah. So I lost I'm sorry. You know, we lost him. And then so I didn't know at the time we were communicating my wife. It wasn't like we weren't communicating, but right. we ended up moving to Arizona just just and I, I was confused because I'm a New York boy, you know, and, and I didn't and I never really I other than going away to college in Utica. I never really I kind of I'm one of those hometown kind of guys, you know, and in right. the country. And so we um, next thing I know, we're going to Arizona. Little did I know it was felt like to turn a new leaf, like odds are, you know, that we have a new leaf. 
Well, right after my son died, it's amazing how God is. Is um, we didn't we didn't know, but the whole time Robert had kidney disease from birth. So James, James died, and then like months later, we found out Robert had kidney disease. Oh my! God. And he wasn't and he wasn't going to get any better. You know, he wasn't going to get any better. Like he was going to have it. So we had to do peritoneal at home and. We, my wife at the time was going like an hour and a half to take them three days a week. And, and the hemodialysis there wouldn't, wouldn't really help us. So anyway, we, so we, so we ended up moving to Arizona and Robert came with us. Well, when we moved out there, I, I didn't have a job. I, I just worked for my family for the whole time and I never really had to look for a job. And so now I had to look for a job and I was really upset. Well, my big hobby is metal detecting. So before we move, oh, okay. that, that's my big hobby. I've been doing it for, you know, I'm a crazy nut. So before <laughs> we moved, I took this whole box and I packed all some of my books. And, and I have many boxes of this stuff, but I packed this one box, put it all in my books, my magazines, everything. And I taped it up myself. So when I get in Arizona, I was supposed to have this landscape job out there. Well, come to find out. I, it was weird how they did it. You, you go for a ride and you see how they do it. You go for an interview. And when I was with the one main guy, he says, I don't think you want to work here because the owner's bipolar. Well, it turns out it kind of seems like to me because I was offered a lot more money in a vehicle. And then when I got there, the money was a lot less. And, you know, so, and, oh and so anyway, gosh. so now I'm like, okay, what do I do? I don't have a job. So I got depressed. I'm not going to lie. So I got depressed. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when I'm out there now, you take a country guy, it's green grass and everything, and you stick them in the desert, you know, and not only that, we were about 40 minutes southeast of Phoenix. I call, we were in a suburb of a suburb of a suburb of Phoenix. So it was all like new to me and all that. And so I was get, getting, you know, depressed about not having a job. That's all I know. Sure. I, I went to college and I had a job. That's what I know. Sure. So I ended up so I, I said, well, maybe look at my metal tech and stuff. So I opened the box up that I taped that I, I, I just, it was only me. I'm the one that did it. And here's this little book, The Prayer of Jabez in it by Bruce Wilkinson. And I'm like, okay. And I, I just sat there and stared for like five minutes. And I'm like, oh, I have to, I guess I got to read this book. I, I, it's all I could think about. I'm the only one that packed it to, to this day. I'm the only one I, in, in my, you know, it was just me. So I start reading this book and I like read it and read it. And I'm like, I started praying the prayer of Jabez because, and, and I, I would take it on interviews. I would take it with me and I, I just couldn't put the book down. Matter of fact, my original copy is so bad. It, it, it's just torn apart. That's how much I read this book. That's a little mm -hmm. thing and it's easy to read. So what it did for me, what I got from the book, because if you hear the prayer, it could partly be like you're being materialistic, like you want all this stuff for yourself. What I understood from the prayer and what I believe by saying it is, here I am, God, I'm here to do your work. What do you want me to do? I'm here to do whatever you want me to do. So I prayed it every cons consistently and I uh, till now. Wow. And so I prayed and then I yeah. sat there and I wondered, oh, Okay, I'm praying this prayer, and it's it, it 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 took me out of my depression, and I ended up getting a job at the Home Depot in the garden department stuff. So in the process, I was sitting there praying, and I was like, "But what am I going to do? I don't know. I don't know the Bible. I couldn't quote you one thing. I I I know a little bit of some stories, but mm -hmm. I, I couldn't do anything. Any and right. anything. Uh, and, and I could try to be a good person, which which I always been, you know, mm -hmm. when I try to help others what I can. But mm -hmm. what am I going to do? Well, in the process of this whole thing, that's where I was. So I was praying and praying. Well, unfortunately, my other son died with kidney disease in Arizona. <laughs> so Lord. my ex-wife found him dead in his apartment after three or four days. And, uh, yeah, so I've lost two kids. So, so we, we we came back to New York to bury him with my – because when we buried my son, it was only a pound and four ounces. It had a little casket like this, and they, they said, we don't want to – bring you any bad luck but we do want you to know it's a fact of life that somebody large size could be buried in the same grave because the casket's only this big and we said okay so anyway literally we know my son robert was going to die and uh, so we came back to new york and they flew his body and you know we came in a separate plane and stuff and we buried him and stuff like that and then we went back to arizona and my one son john that stayed here and then we got back there and we're like, okay, what, 
you know, what are we doing here? This is, you know, all we got. I did get a great friend, Brian Tanner. He and him and I became really good friends out there in the time I was there. And it was great. But other than that, in a house, you know, what are we going to do? So we ended up losing everything financially, uh, all the medical bills and the kids dying. And, yes. you know, we, we lost all our homes and financially we're devastated. So but out there, I was like, what's, you know, family's more important, kids and all that. So we we came back to New York and uh, and then we ended up uh, my wife and I, we, we you know, our kids came with us and our son John was going to college and he'd come back in the thing. And then over time you, you have all that devastation and all that it, it wears on a marriage. So my wife and yeah. I split up. Sure. So, so all along I'm praying this prayer and I'm saying this prayer and I'm like, what, you know, I don't know what I, I just kept saying it. And, and, and the only thing that was great, it never made me go to go to um, church and like that, but I just kept praying it. But the one thing I learned from it and the one thing I always thought was my belief is that you don't have to go to church to be with God, Absolutely. you know, Jesus, you, yeah. you, you, you could, you could be with yeah. God and Jesus anywhere you are. So sure. one of the ways, one of the ways I did it was by listening to Christian radio, you know, just the Christian songs. And so I, know, that I do one, that too. It makes you feel that, close. Yeah. That, that, that's one of my, that was the way I did. So mm -hmm. we moved back and then, and then uh, we were, you know, probably about a, I think a year or a little less than a year we decided to split. Well, you know, being the father, I mean, it killed me to leave my kids and I didn't want to, We, but it just was just, it, it was needed to be done. And my kids were young and, uh, but you know, you don't, you don't make your kids leave their bedrooms where, you know, so you leave, you know, I'm the one that was going to be by myself. So, you know, my ex-wife got to have, you know, at the time was living in the house and the kids stayed. Well, I needed a place to live. Well, my brother owns a house right next to our landscape shop and it was vacant and it took me a little while. And I I, I didn't know whether I want to do it, to be honest, because my brother's my brother. My brother's my boss at both jobs. And now my brother will be my landlord. That's a lot of stuff, <laughs> you know, with, with your brother, you know. So yeah. but I ended up. So anyway, it worked out. We, we came up with agreement and I was a little concerned because it's right near my shop. My, the, the landscape is my main you know, 40, 45, 50 hour a week job. And sure. then I work at the family gas station on the weekends and nights and, you know, and then during the winter when it's slower landscaping, but, but it, it really did. I, it's crazy. But that little walk down the driveway, I did feel like I was leaving work and home. So it kind of was working out, but I was, um, got to remember, I went from having kids and all that. And I'm sure other people can relate to this to just me. And I had, when I had my kids and things, they were growing up, the landscape of uh, the the metal detecting kind of went by the wayside. I'd get out like one time or stuff like that. So I ended up, I continued to say the prayer. I was very depressed. You know, I just my kids, missing my kids and all that. But they would come on the weekends. And then I said to myself, I said, one, I, I walk. So I started walking a lot. And then I said, well, you got a metal detect like you used to. Make make it a make it a thing. So I said, okay, one, one, uh, I usually had at least one day and a weekend off, either Saturday, or Sunday. And since, you know, when I don't have my kids, um, you, you, you know, you, you go, you go for the whole day. And, and so I started doing that and bring a lunch. And so I started getting, you know, better. And then I ended up, uh, but still saying a prayer and I'm like, okay, okay. You know, I'm talking, this is, you know, a few years now I'm saying a prayer and I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess, just, so could, could you say real quick, Jim, what was, the, do you, I know you said it short, what was the exact prayer? Cause you know what? A lot of people probably want to say it too. Well, this is the way, oh, oh Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. May your hand be with me, with me and um, keep me from pain. You know, kind of, you know, that's kind of the rough thing. It's a okay. prayer of Jabez. Okay. That and, was, okay. Say it again. I'll do it. Okay. I'll be concentrated. Say it one more time. Oh, oh Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. May your hand be with me. And may you keep me from um, may may you keep me from pain, kind of thing. It's like that, you know. And I, I, I my brain injury, I forget, okay. I, I say it, but then I kind of forget some, you know. Okay, so it was like basically watch it's, over you. Is that it? Well, it's it's like here I am, Lord. I'm ready to do your work. Like in and, the book, in, and in, 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 like in the book, this person kept saying it, and and he, he was running a um a youth group, and he started saying and praying it. 
and and nothing, you know, there wasn't a place to have a bill. I, I forget this acting, but there wasn't like a spa and it was like two kids. Well, he kept saying it. And the next thing you know, they had a spa and now there's like a hundred kids. You know what I mean? It's like doing God's work. And here I am to do your work. What do you want me to do? So I, I was, you know, I was praying it and stuff like that. And, um, you know, and, and I still, sometimes I mess it up my brain injury and stuff like that. I, I, but, but I get the gist of it when I say it. it's real short, like four, four lines. It's in the Bible. It's actually in the Bible, just a little short, little thing. It's in there. So, and I don't, I don't want page or what, you know, and stuff like that. It, it, you know, so anyway, so I, I was saying this prayer and, but it changed my life because I never prayed for anything before, <laughs> you know? So I started praying for you, if you were sick and I knew you, I, I, I'd say a prayer for you because it made, so that's what one of the things it did for me, it, it turned, it, it, you know, I could pray, you know, and it, I know it sounds crazy, but I never really did. You know, and I, so that helped, you know, that helped. So I, I, you know, so I was doing all this, you know, you know, so I ended up metal detecting and stuff and doing a sweep. And I bring that up because here we go. Here's the day. So I went metal detecting on November 15, 2009. It was a fall day. It was beautiful. It was cold, but I'm a nut. I've gone in the snow. I, I, I you know, I'm a, just a nut with it. So I ended up going to uh, metal tech at my friend's house. So I, I was detecting there and stuff like that. He has 1,700 homes. I'm into, you know, I old stuff, colonial stuff and all that. Okay. And so I detected all day and I saw him and had lunch there and everything like that. And then I ended up leaving there. And my parents had been living in, they, they have a house in Fine Plains, but my cousin, they got invited out by my cousin, my aunt, to live in Vegas like half the year. So my cousin, they brought a house for my mom and dad to live in, or they owned a home and my mom and dad could stay there and, you know, pay the, you know, pay their bills. But it, it, it allowed them to go out there for, you know, half the year or whatever. So they wanted to come back to New York for a visit. And I know it sounds crazy because their house is like two miles away, three miles away. And they said, let's go stay with Jim. It'll be like on vacation. So they came and lived at, you know, with me while their house is only a few miles away. So my parents were with me at that at that time, and they were out with friends. Well, I came home, and I'm going to say it now, and it's in the book and everything like that. I'm a horrible cook. I can <laughs> I can bake. I can bake up a storm. I, I got this homemade cream cheese frosting that I make. Everybody loves it. I could do all that, but when it comes to cooking, I'm not a cook. I'm a big guy, but I'm not a cook. So needless to say, since I've been on my own at the time, it was salads and a lot of tuna fish, we, we tuna fish specials, you know, and all that. So that Sunday, I came home from metal tech and, and I made something. My mom and dad had been out to dinner. They come home, I eat. I don't feel well. And it's, and it's Sunday. Normally I walk. I was walking every day, every day, but I went metal tech and all day. So I don't need to walk that day. So I normally go to town to walk because there's street lights. There's no street lights around my house. It's a dead end road I live on. Oh, now I don't okay. really I don't really know the road too well because I never lived on the road. I know the shop. I drive to the shop, work and go home. There was no reason to really I've been up and down the road a little bit. And you know, when we were younger, my sister lived down the road a little, you know, and things like that. But I didn't pay attention to anything. You know, I just go down there and come back. So I was like, well, I don't feel well. I'm going to go for a little walk. So I tell my mom, my dad's watching TV. I tell my mom I'm going to go for a walk. But I wasn't going for a walk like I do normally where I exercise. So the next thing you know, mm -hmm. I um, I was going to go for a walk. And we kind of took it out of the book. I'm like, yeah, but this is true. But I had gassy stomach, you know. And if you do a lot of moving around, you know, you, you tend to get some natural movement. And your stomach maybe right. feels a little better. Well, so that's what right. I that's what I went out to do, to just get moving around a little bit and stuff like that. So I, you know, got dressed. I even wore my pajama pants to go walk, you know. And my my goal was to go out the end of the and I was the first house on the left at the time. Now there's a house built between me and the entranceway. But I was going to go to the entranceway. There's a town hall across the street with some lights. Walk around there, not the town hall, but walk in that area and come home. So that was my right. goal. So I ended up going out and uh, I went that way. And it, I forget, it's like 
quarter mile maybe it, it's not far but it's a little bit a little, little distance and i started getting out there and uh, a car was pulled off the road the main road and i said oh and they were out and they were from what i they were drunk not the driver but people were drunk you know that rode with them and they were urinating on the road you know oh my goodness so anyway <laughs> they, they just stopped to go to the bathroom you know and they okay. were a little rowdy so here I am in the dark. Again, remember, it's dark. At the time, I thought the moon was out, but it ended up being real foggy that night. But it, it wasn't, the fog wasn't down to where I thought it was foggy. So I just walked. And I went out there, and I got there, and then I decided I would not go any further. Because I don't need no trouble, you know? Here, here's a guy walking in the dark. They're obviously drunk. They seem happy drunks, not mean or nasty. I just didn't want, I just didn't want to... Have a right, confrontation. Engage in that, yeah. So yeah, so I turned around. Well, I came back down towards my house, and I still didn't feel well. And now I'm walking on the town road, and I'm like, you know, a dead, you know, it's dead end road. But so I'm like, I don't feel well. So I said, I'll go a little further. So I went, and there's a little hill in front of my house. And I said, well, if I go down the little hill and I go a little further, I'll turn around, come up the hill, and you know, I mean, the gas will kind of, you know, and I'll feel a little better. Because I knew if I went to bed, I wasn't going to yeah, sleep most of the right. night. I had that feeling, you know, I was going to be uncomfortable. So I just, right. you know, so that's what I did. So I went past my house and I got down, ended up being past my neighbor's house. And it got, you know, it got darker down there, but I was on the road. You could tell you on the road. I did go to bring a flashlight, but the batteries were dead in it, you know. And so at the time, <laughs> I I didn't have um, oh I didn't have the smartphone thing you have now and stuff where you had the flashlight. I had the flip phone. You know the flip mm. cell phone, and there's no service and stuff. I, you know, when I was listening to my uh, my i uh, not iPad, iPod, but MP3 players, there's a little music, okay. just just for a little stroll. And so then I said, oh, I just got past my neighbor's house, which ain't right next door, but there's woods between us. And I, you know, and then I was like, okay, enough, enough. I'll turn around. By the time I get back home, I'll feel a little better, and you know, and works tomorrow. It's Sunday night, you know. So I started walking back up the hill or towards the hill. And the one thing, you know, being on a dead end road and, and our landscape shop and the, in the, my driveway, they're all connected. It's a little bigger entrance. And many people come down the road and they turn around at our entrance and uh, say, Oh, I'm on a dead end road. Let me turn around and go back. So, so my point is car lights, you know, shine down the road, but they don't go all the way down the road. They turn around. I saw car lights coming off the hill. But, you know, look like the car was near our shop. And when I walk at night, you know, like like if it's, you know, especially in that situation, I get off the road and I stop so that the the uh, you know, they there's time for the car to see me or I just get off the road and I'm not in the way and let them go by. I don't keep walking towards them. That's always been my way. And I was walking towards traffic. So that's what I did. Next thing you know, I went to get off the side of the road. And the next thing you know, I was free falling. <gasps> that, that's the, it's like the back, word. back. No, I, I ended up taking, going to my left. Mm -hmm. And I, I, next thing you know, I slept, I slipped and I, I started falling. My head and started going like that head first. Oh, dear God. Okay. So it's like the world opened up. Mm. So, <sighs> that, so then I, next thing I know, crunch. I landed on my head. I hit my head here on rock. I, I hit here first. My head's all caved in. I hit my left shoulder. I hit here uh, third. And then my hip, my, my side of my legs on the left side. My whole other side never hit the ground. So I knocked. I was unconscious laying in, laying in this. And ended so, up being over. So it was like in a ditch kind of. Uh, yeah, it was a. It was a formal culvert that ended up okay. used to have a guardrail, didn't have one. Okay, because I was, oh, because I was gonna, I saw pictures of it. I'm like, why didn't they have a guardrail? Well, it used to, it was, it was oh. the state, it was a state road and they gave it to the town, you know, and because okay. the people were getting killed on this bridge on the stream down the road. So they cut it off there and blew through the mountain and made the road, state road. And then they gave the town this little because it looked deep. How deep was it down there? It's, the uh, from from at uh, fourteen feet from the from the ground. Oh my! And what was down there? Just trees and grass and uh, things. Uh, rocks, 
rock. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. It gets uh, it gets water. It's it's a through like during the spring. You know, that's another miracle thing. There was no water the night I fell. Because if there was water, I wouldn't be here. It flooded. It could have drowned you. Yeah, yeah. It didn't take much to drown me that night. But luckily, I just happened to fall when there was no water. So anyway, so yeah, so I landed on my head and I was unconscious. I don't know how long. Every speech, every speech I do, wherever TV show, wherever I do it, right, right. I mean, it could be, it could be a second, or it could be a minute, or it could be two seconds, ten seconds. I have no idea how long I was out, and I have no idea how the how long this whole process took. I don't know. I, well, I've always that's said understandable. That. So I just. So anyway, so I finally woke up and I knew I, I knew I was in trouble. I was in serious pain. And I had this, at the time, I obviously I wasn't crying because I was knocked out and I had this blood, ended up being blood all over my face and it was dripping on me. So what I did and, and my left side, like I said, with my, you know, was hurt. So I, I reached with my right arm and my fingers went in my skull. Dear God. But they went yeah. right in my skull. Like it was boom like that. And they went right in there and I said, okay, I'm in trouble. So I did think about, I had enough. It, it was, it was kind of crazy that stuff I thought about. And I, to be honest with you, uh, you know, I had, you know, help. I, I, I the only way I can say it, you know, I had the, I had the right help and enough help to do whatever. You're but saying anyway, you had- divine help because if you had a hole in your skull like that it's you're saying you're even amazed that you were able yeah. to yeah yeah some of the some of the stuff i thought and did that night amazes me but part of the story i did it all myself and i'll tell that in a second i still believe no one like no one came but you'll you'll get in a minute but i believe some of the stuff i thought i'm like how can you be thinking that stuff in that situation but i did think about my cell phone you know i i don't know why i don't know how i don't know but and then I remembered, I don't know how I remembered this stuff, but I remembered the cell phone service stinks around here. So <laughs> odds are it wasn't gonna I work. That too. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you know, and then I and then I remembered that the cell phone is dark unless someone calls you. It was a flip phone or you open it up. So how am I and then I and then I realized myself that I would waste so much energy trying to find it. So all this stuff I thought, and I'm, I, this is the first interview I've actually said it, but, you know, I'm wondering how, you know, some of that stuff I thought, I'm like, well, how did I really think about well, that? Well, because you, know? you probably thought time was a factor and that you didn't have time to, you're for, if you're losing blood, you didn't have time to, you had to do the most immediate action. That's probably yeah. what you're thinking. Yeah. So then, so then I, I realized I, I, so my next thought was I had to figure out which, you know, there was um i had to figure out i i forgot i was on a road though and and then i was coming to and i'm like where, oh, where did i come from i mean literally it was like the face the, the earth opened up it was like a big sinkhole and boom there it is and i'm i'm down so i i was able to not move much but at the time i was able to look and i kind of could look up kind of to my left and my right and there was this big over it ended up being the wall of the culvert this big cement looking like wall and there was to, to my other side was like this field so then i had to wear you know the thoughts enough to say well i didn't fall from the field i must have fell from this wall you know this thing oh, you know okay. it, it, you know and, and then i remembered i was walking then it kind of came to a little bit but then i was in so much pain that it's really true for me things started coming to me like my life my kids and things were like okay you know the chances are you know, I'm going to die. It's just, it, it, it but I, and, and then I said to myself, I got to call out. So I started calling out, God, you know, I, I said, help me, God, help me. And I actually used the word God. Yeah. And I don't think I use it every, everything I said, but I, I said it enough times. But then, even then I realized that it was getting quieter. Like, like, okay, this is a waste of time. Uh, every, every time I try to yell, it, it, it it's like, you can't hear me after a while because I can't yell that loud. And I'll, I'll tell my injuries a little, little bit later, but there's obviously yeah. when you hear them, there's reasons why. So then I was like, okay, now what do I do? And then I said to myself, well, I'll be, uh, well, I got to go. I got to, but then my son, my ex-wife finding my son, Robert dead in his apartment. 
after three or four days, her own son. That was her biological, my stepson. He never met his dad, so I was like his dad. And they, you, you can imagine what she saw. We never talked to this day about what she saw. So that went through my head, and I'm like, well, I'm a, I'm a, I, I know I'm a bloody mess. I started crying. Of course, things got worse, and I'm, it's, it's horrible. You, you, whoever finds me, it's not going to be happy. Right. So then I decided, well, and this is really true. And this is no lie. I decided if I could get to that road and die, they'll find me in the morning. That was so right. I said, OK, right. if I get to the road, they'll because if I didn't do what I did, they were going to have to get the dogs to find me. Because to fast forward a little bit later, my mom and dad would have went to town to look for me walking in town because that's what I do. But now my car was there. So maybe they would have been OK. Maybe he's walking around here. But I normally don't, and they wouldn't know where to go. So they would have they had to find you. They, they would have, dogs would have had to come, or they would have had to get something to find me, or get lucky and find me. But it's like I disappeared. So I decided if I can get to the road, I really did. That was my option. At that point in time, I said, if I can get to the road and die, I did what I had to do. So it wouldn't be like a day later or whatever, you know, when you're, you're right. dying, you know. So that's what I did. So I decided I got to get to the road. Okay, the next um, thing is, am I paralyzed? You know, I didn't know yet. I was still laying on the rocks. I didn't know what I broke or anything like that. I just was in serious pain. So then I said, no, okay, you know, I got to try. So I crawled, moved over a little bit, and I was moving. You, you know, my one arm shot, my other, you know, and I'm moving. And I started moving a little bit. Mm. And th to this day, I, I, I this is another, this, this part mm. is, the, 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 the culvert's a wall here, and then there's two side things. I was in the, like here, I didn't go into that wall. Something something told me not to go into that wall. I went around the wall. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't. So I, I am confused on how I only had so much energy left, and I didn't waste it going into that little side wall because it was hard to see. It was dark. I, I, I Somehow I was led, and there was no light. There wasn't like a shine on the light saying, Go here. Yeah, you said it's dark. So, but I went around the wall. I don't know how I did it. I, I don't know how I knew to go around. So I get to this wall, and it's like this. This this and it ended up being a hill of, of leaves and trees and branches. And so I climbed this hill. People to this day after have gone down in are healthy people. I won't do it myself. I've been there in the book, it says I haven't been, but enough people come to visit <laughs> me that want to go see where I fell that after a while I had to You're go like, okay. And, okay. And, yeah. and and I do get they people get goosebumps there, you know, and, and it's definitely something amazing happened there. So I've been and I've been, you know, with the guy post story. They took a picture of me down there and all that. So anyway, I ended up so I climbed this hill. And every time I took a little climb up and move up and I slid a little down and went a little bit up and slid down, went up, slid down. And and so I was getting you know, moving up the hill. I don't know how long it took me to climb this hill. And I came to this, which is an amazing part of the story. I came to this, ended up being a log. So I got to this log and then I looked kind of over the log. It wasn't a big log, but remember, I'm kind of stuck to the ground because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of slithering up the hill like a snake. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I get to this log and then I kind of look over the log and it's not a big, big log. But I, I was able, and, and it looked like I was by the road. So I said, I made it. Now I can die. So that's what, and I, and the amount of pain I was in just to do all what I did, I, I just said, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dying. I, I was, of course, I was crying because I, I have, you know, my kids here and my family here, but I have my kids in heaven. If you believe in heaven, I have my kids are there because my one son was 18 years old and died. And my other son is a 10 days old and died. If, if you, you know, they didn't sin. They didn't have time to do much of that. My, sure, my 18, yeah, we all as kids have done things we're not supposed to. But overall, he, you know, he lived a pretty good life for what he did. And my, you know, but my, so they'd be there. Now, here's the only deal, though. Remember, I, I, I'm a Christian Christian. I don't know the Bible. Did <laughs> I do enough to go to heaven? So I didn't know. I didn't know. But I, but I, I, I was upset you know <clears throat> but i also said <coughs> excuse me i also said that i could go there or not go you know so i didn't know 
but I just was dead. But I never, I, I, I was there to die. That's all I knew. So you so got I, to the log and when you got to the log, you saw the road. So this log was on the side of the road and the, did you cross the log or say, did you cross that log or so people could see you on the road? I laid on the log. You laid on the log. The log, and, the log was here. I laid on the log, put my upper body in the log and, and put my head kind of like that and closed my eyes. And you thought, well, yeah, here I go. I'm dead. You, this is yeah, where you I'm go. gonna die. I and, never died though. I never, I never died. This whole experience, I want to say it right now, I never died. I never totally hundred percent died. So well, I mean, but, you're, you're uh, here. Uh, <laughs> but but but, uh, but I mean, some people claim yeah. to die and come back and all that. I never died. I never got to the point where I was dead. But my options were nil and none, and I was and I laid on the log and to die. Well, and I closed yeah, my eyes. Here's the thing: there's different types of near death experiences where you're almost dead, you're close to death, or where you actually do die, cross over, and come back. There's different stages. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. but t but I mean, talk about your body. What kind of mangled? Um, so a situation I'll fast forward so it, it, it's more relatable and then I'll finish with that part of the story. So my, my injuries, and I got it, I got it down like a menu. So I ended up fracturing my skull, brain bleed, concussion, traumatic brain injury. I broke my left scapula. I broke 11 ribs. I broke seven on the left and I broke four on the right. And I hit so hard that the four on the right never hit the ground. That's how hard I hit. Oh my God. And then I ended up breaking C7. I broke that two ways. And I broke from T12 to T1. I broke nine of those vertebrae. And I broke two of those two ways. So I broke 23 bones with 26 fractures. And it I broke my neck and 13 fractures on my neck and spine and, and your head. And, and you had said, I'm a coach. Okay, this is the other thing you got to remember. I was a coach and I took first aid and all that stuff. Anybody hits their head or anything like that, you don't, you don't move. move. You don't You're not move. supposed to move. Well, what, yeah. what about all that crazy stuff I just did? And I knew, but... I, I, I did all three. Right. I, I hit my head, I broke my neck, broke my back, and I did all this crazy moving. I mean, this so, is, you didn't stand upright because you probably couldn't, but you slithered. You said you just kind of fought yeah, your I'm way just, awkwardly I'm, up the up best you could. But I'm thinking, I've had before a couple of broken ribs where I fell and landed on it. It was... I can't imagine all the things that you had and then this and then the neck and the spine, because just that for any of you that haven't had this, it was excruciating. I couldn't breathe. Every breath hurt for you to inhale and exhale. And I just can't imagine because it's like no pain you can. <laughs> and the yeah, fact you had both sides, several in your neck, I just I'm blown away and, and, and going going back in the hole real quick that's why the, I, I i tried screaming out for help and it got lower and lower because i had 11 ribs broken well so you couldn't get no air you can't yeah. Uh, yeah yeah i mean that is that's so i want to hear about what happened from the log and then from um and then you know again your your thought process what happened there and then also you know, your surgeries, what it took to get well, and then also your spiritual journey. We can save that for uh, the next segment. So everybody stay tuned and then we'll get to that because I want to find out about this is amazing. I mean, I'm just I've got the chills. So stay tuned for the next part where we find out what happened from the log as this journey continues and still buy the book. Make sure you buy Jim's book and it's down below for the link. Okay, stay tuned for next time. See you later. Please subscribe, like, and make comments. And support this channel by becoming a member. Thank you for your continued support.